How are you, Sanchez? How much did you ask her? Happy New Year, I guess. Uh, it's New Year already where I live. Uh, I guess in the US and other places, it's still time. So yeah, 2023 was good for me. I hope it was good for you. And let's hope 2024 is even better. Uh, you know, post-COVID, it's like, uh, you know, it's around this 2023 is where it felt like things are recovering. Even though, yeah, it's like 2022 was also like, felt like a recovering phase. But 2023 was like proper where it's like, okay, COVID is back in the back mirror. So let's hope like no shit like that happen in the future. And yeah, the 2024 is good. So this is the Berlin Wall, how communism turned East Germany into a prison state. Yeah, I guess he's, he's going to the start of the Cold War, I guess. Let's watch it. Yeah, this is from the Federation, obviously, Yellow Federation. This is like two videos in one week. That's like, okay, that's a surprise. That was like a Christmas special one before, which was also awesome about the tavern and things, uh, about the academy. And this is about the Berlin Wall. Yeah, he's going to talk about uh, West and East Germany, communism, right? <laughs> this is the peak Federation whenever he talks about communism, I guess. Let's watch it. If you haven't seen my other Federation reactions, I guess, there's a link in the description there you'll find it. Or in the end of the video, you'll find end cards, I guess, with the playlist and things. Let's watch this one. People are probably going to get mad and call this video propaganda, but in my defense, it's not my fault. The only thing you have to do to make anti-communist propaganda is to open a history book and start reading it out loud. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, if you want to see everything as propaganda, you will, right? What if all history books are written by the people who want to, like, change history and just lying? What is everything's fake news? Like, at that point, like, can anything convince you? Come on. Today we're talking about the Berlin Wall. It is one of the greatest examples of capitalism versus communism, East versus West, hungry versus fed that the world has ever seen. But first a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Operation Good Boy. It's a monthly subscription box. It's got all kinds of good... Are you okay? <coughs> don't puke in my office, please. Yeah, you're gonna get a treat in a second if you don't puke. Okay, hang on, one second. You've ruined my intro. Anyways, it comes with all kinds of cool stuff for your dog. We've got dog poop picker upper bags. We've got a little doggy first aid kit. We've got daily multivitamins for him. And then we've got Mushu's favorite, the TRE, the treats ready to eat. These are made right here in America. And Mushu is a big fan, right? Give me a shake. Good, you didn't puke. Wonderful work. Go ahead. Good job. So yeah, if you've got a dog, go check out Operation Good Boy. I'll have a link and a discount code in the description down below. Let's get back to the video. All right, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the biggest logistical flex of all time, that being the Berlin airlift, when the USSR mm. tried to blockade off West Berlin to force them to become communist and to join the USSR. And America and the UK teamed up to deliver them supplies using only cargo planes, landing a cargo plane into West Berlin every two minutes, all day, every day for 15 months straight, feeding and supplying an entire city with 4.6 billion pounds of supplies. It was insane how one side was having party and just eating chocolates left and right while the other side was starving. That was just, yeah. If you want to watch that full video, I'll have that linked right here. If not, that's fine. Here's the bare minimum background info that you need. Right after World War II, Germany was basically split into two pieces. You had the Western powers, America, the UK, and France controlling the Western half of Germany, and you had the USSR controlling the Eastern half. And here's where that gets weird. They did the same exact thing with the city of Berlin, where the West controlled the Western half and the USSR controlled the Eastern half, except Berlin was 100 miles into the USSR territory. And this is why the USSR blockaded off West Berlin and tried to force them to join because they didn't want a little i think they should have done should have done like north and south type of way rather than east and west that could have saved them trouble wouldn't it right i mean i don't know rather than just doing this like they should have cut from here so at least it cuts from berlin so it's like north of berlin and south berlin that way yeah, like shit like this doesn't happen right now it's just like okay oh, communism whole like covering the one city and there you go that that caused all issue that gets weird they controlled the eastern half, except Berlin was 100 miles into the USSR territory. And this is why the USSR blockaded off West Berlin and tried to force them to join because they didn't want a little speck of capitalism in their communist utopia. But the West isn't mm. about to back down from a challenge, so America and the UK team up, Wonder Twin Powers activate, they launch the Berlin airlift, they feed an entire city using nothing but cargo planes, and after 15 months, the USSR is finally forced to end the blockade because they can't afford to try to stop them anymore. So 1949, the roads and railways to West Berlin 
Neverland open back up and everything goes back to working exactly how it was supposed to and this is where the story really begins. From 1949 to 1951 we had what was known as a green border between East and West Germany. Basically there was a border there, they're two separate countries, however it was very very easy to go from one country to the other and back it was no big deal at all. Which was really important because you have to remember they just drew an arbitrary line right through the middle of Germany and were like hey these are two separate countries now. It was really complicated for a lot of people. You had people that had family members that now live in a different country. You had people whose home was in one country and job was in the other. You had it was more of like who's gonna govern who rather than like separate countries. That's why they can just walk past, right? Like it was like this is gonna control by the West, this is gonna control by the like communists. That's about it farmers and property owners that now owned property in a country that they didn't live in. It was very, very complicated. And while the border yeah. is essentially open, a ton of people from East Germany are taking advantage of it and migrating to West Germany because it's way, way better to live in West Germany where the evil capitalist pigs from America and the UK have been funneling in billions of dollars worth of food, money, and resources helping to build West Germany back up as a country as opposed to the USSR over in East Germany who has done the exact opposite because they said, hey, we want our war reparations and we want them right now. The USSR takes over $10 billion worth of hard assets and natural resources out of the East German economy and ships it back home. That is a third of the working capital of the entire country. Quite literally just took a third of their economy and got rid of it. And if that wasn't bad enough, they also liquidated almost every factory in East Germany. They took all of the machinery, all the parts, all the material that they had Communism. and shipped it back home to the USSR. Not only have they stripped East Germany of all of their products, Product, they've stripped them of their ability to produce they can't see the thing is like capitalism democratic ca capitalism they value human or uh, individual that in, i don't know the individuality or anything else communism is not that communism is about common good rather than one singular person so obviously when you have like a, a, a you know first of all it's also become like a big pr thing to show like how bad communism is so if when you are someone like who values humans rights and human things individual things and when you see it like okay if if an individual is in problem let's say like some house or some anyone is in problem the governing body will do anything in their power to basically or you know in theory to help around them right because a person is in need or something communism would be like i would help you only if it like helps the you know whole country as a whole because it's about the people in whole rather than just one individual person so obviously when you see communism where they're just like stripping everything out of you they don't care about you individually as a person because they they at this point you know it was like all overblown right because they weren't even following their own thing right it's like what is good for the country is what i decided it was basically become a dictatorship at this point so it's like people were like stripping off the factories were stripping off because this is good for the community this is good for ussr there you go so people when they see that of course they just walk into the west can't even work themselves out of this difficult situation. Because of this, understandably so, people start leaving East Germany in droves. Now, by 1952, the USSR identifies this problem, understanding, oh shit, obviously our policies aren't very popular. We should probably do something about that. The only question is, what are we gonna do about it? Do we A, come up with new policies that incentivize people to stay, making them want to be there and making them want to be a productive member of this society? That's not communism. No, absolutely not. We're gonna go with option B, old reliable, good old fashioned human rights violations. Okay, so here's the plan. We're going to shut down the border between East and West Germany. We're going to build a wall or a fence. And I know what you're thinking. Basically, the whole uh, target of communism is like, I don't know what's good for the people, but they won't like it. So basically, you can't sell that to people. So obviously, people are going to leave. So communism doesn't work like that, right? And even if you do communism, they weren't even doing communism. They're like, you know, like I said, like, what is good for the people is what I decide, what certain individual decides. It was basically becoming a dictatorship by this point. It's like, what I decide is the good for the people, right? So they weren't even doing their thing. And obviously, they don't care about individual person. So yeah, everybody's going to walk away. So obviously, they're going to border up. They're not going to change everything what they are. But right? they're not going to stop communism and their dictator element and just like start capitalism or democracy at that point and walls don't work. Well, if the wall doesn't work, you know what is going to work? The landmines that we put on the other side of it. And if that doesn't work, we're going to get guard dogs. And if the guard dogs don't work, we're going to put up a bunch of guard towers and we're going to have over 20,000 men with guns watching the border 24-7 all the time. And they have the authority to shoot anyone trying to escape 
on site. Now, obviously there's one glaring hole in this plan. What if somebody is able to get past the wall, navigate through a minefield, evade the dogs, and they get seen by the guard, but because the guard is in East German and he probably doesn't want to be in East Germany either, what if the guard just doesn't shoot him and lets him go over to West Germany? Well, that's where the giant sand pit comes in. We're going to line the entire border between East and West Germany with a 30 foot wide pad of sand. And that way we'll be able to see any footprints when somebody runs out of East Germany into you the can West. And the then guide? we're going to know that somebody escaped and we're going to hold the guard on duty for that sector responsible. And then he's going to get in trouble. Buh! Having a very secure border isn't a human rights violation. Buh! Well, right. When you're using it to keep people out, but when you're using it to keep people in, it's absolutely who the fuck says that <laughs> you are keeping people as prisoners whenever an entity or a country suddenly decides the people of that country is like now a property of said country whenever a country as an entity is more important than any person or people even in group not i'm not even talking about individual like that doesn't work in communism but even as a group of people everybody want to live no they're gonna get shot so at this point people are property of ussr that's not what borders are for. <laughs> be a human rights violation according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let me just read that for you. Article 13, Our common section sense. 2, quote, Everyone has the right to leave any country, including his own, and return to his country, end quote. So yes, turning an entire country into a prison and refusing to let anyone leave. You know what? Only reason why leaving a country to go somewhere else is illegal because somewhere else might not want you. Not because your people don't want to leave you before you oppress them is in fact a human rights violation. However, to be completely intellectually honest, I do have to tell you that the Soviet Union is one of only three nations that refused to sign the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and they refused to sign it specifically because of Article 13, Section 2, which I just read to you. They basically said that they would only consider signing it if this was added to the end of Article 13. Quote, in accordance with the procedure laid down in each country, end quote. They were unanimously declined because that would ruin the entire point of Article 13. 13, which would basically just mean that, um, yeah, you have a human right to leave a country unless that country tells you you can't. So what's the point of even having that as a human right? So the border is pretty much completely shut down. The only exceptions to that are the fact that you can apply for a visa to leave East Germany. However, it's very expensive. You get interrogated by the government and the only people to actually get these visas. Okay, <laughs> man, this is, <clears throat> well, there you go. Yeah, the whole thing about this, right? Like, I like somebody just justifies some act as like, it was legal, so it's fine. Like, they didn't sign it, so it's fine. And people like, uh, you know, a lot of time you want to attack me in the comments, like when I make some comment. First of all, it's a reaction channel. I'm going to make comment. What am I just watching video here? So people get pissed off sometimes. They're like, oh, that was different then. That was legal then. Like, some things are based on common sense, right? If some, th some if murder is legal somewhere and they didn't point blank, like, you know, made it illegal, doesn't make it right. It's still immoral. That is something as immoral. Now get it like thousands and thousands of years ago when it's like long enough time where people all were different. They weren't like enlightened enough, right? And yes, it is enlightened. You can't just say different time and they're equal. No, the more, the more we progress, right? The more we're, be we're, <clears throat> we're getting better. So, you know, back then when they're like, conditions were different, history was different, they were not, you know, enlightened enough and shit was happening, I understand that. But like, don't come to me like just few, uh, a few centuries here and there, like few decades here and there, and it was like legal then, and it was a different time. No, that's not far back enough to be a different time, right? Something is immoral, then it's immoral. Awarded to them are people that are working on behalf of the Communist Party or somebody that is obscenely rich and is for sure coming back anyways, which seems like a weird hypocritical policy for a communist regime whose ultimate goal is to have a moneyless class. Oh, that's like a lot. Where everybody is treated equally. <laughs> to have but whatever and then of course they have to allow travel from west germany into west berlin and to do that there's very very strict see uh, federation is always like you know bashing anything else that is not american passing communism left and right and nobody will ever like nobody saying will ever say like he's wrong or he's not right right I, I, I would never say that because yeah he's always right right communism has always done that Right? You can like as an ideology how communism it is, but what communism had happened in the past, those were not good, right? Those were, like you say, hypocritical. A lot of time they were saying one thing or doing another thing. It was just bad all around. Every history is just littered with that. So every time Ferdinand said, everybody's like, yeah, sounds about right because it is right. 
<laughs> routes anybody traveling from West Germany to West Berlin has to take, and they have to go straight from one straight to the other, and they hit multiple checkpoints along the way. And this is extremely important because it opens up the Berlin loophole because Berlin, the city that's 100 miles into communist territory, has that little speck of capitalism in it, and there's no border between West Berlin and East Berlin. So you can literally oh, just yeah. walk from East Berlin right into West Berlin, and it's not an issue at all. So that becomes the Fly only way to from escape else. East Germany. People travel to East Berlin and then simply walk into West Berlin, and then they catch a car or a train or a bus from West Berlin to West Germany, and then they never go back. And between 1952 and 1961, somewhere between two and four million people do this. Bear in mind, East Germany... Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> What's... Going from West Germany to, I guess, USA hard at that time. How was immigration? Because after you, Europe is fucked around this time, every single country, even when the one you're not thinking of is not doing so well. So just going to America is the only option left because that's the only country that's not like, you know, in World War II, but it's not in bad condition. But if anything, it's like getting better because they weren't like physically one there, right? In the, obviously, like in Pacific theater, they were. But like USA, like land was never attacked. So they would just fly there. Like, was that even allowed? I don't know. But if I were there, I would just do that. Like go to West Germany and just like fly to USA. There you go. Germany only has a population of 17 million. That's over 20% of the population walks into West Berlin and never comes back. And of the people that did leave, they were disproportionately young, highly skilled, highly intelligent people like doctors, I mean, yeah. lawyers, skilled tradesmen. Did you did you take a degree just so you can get screwed by like what was like Stalin or Stalin or whatever? No, he's gonna go to West Germany just like yeah engineers and because of this this got the nickname the brain drain so 1961 the USSR German was like engineers. oh shit this is a humongous problem all the young smart people are leaving we got to do something about this should we i don't know incentivize highly successful young people to want to stay here nah break out old reliable more human rights violations for everybody seriously so August 13th, look they make exception all the time like he said like they were like lot this is lots this is like hypocritical the one decision they could have made is trying to make sure like who's smart and just trying to make their life better at least, like selectively at least, right? They could have done that and imagine like German engineers, German scientists in USSR doing things for USSR, how different that would have turned out, right? USSR could have benefited from all those scientists and things, but nah. 1961, in the middle of the night, a bunch of East German construction workers and cops show up with guns and they put a fence all the way around West Berlin. Not to keep the West Berliners in, but to keep the East Berliners out. And East and West Berlin at this point in time were still very much intertwined. There were people that lived in the East and worked yeah. in the West and vice versa. And there were people that had family members on one side or the other side. And there were people that owned businesses and property. There were people that were seeing relatives and got separated from their families. And they weren't allowed to get back on the other side of the wall. There were literally thousands of people in Berlin that woke up one day and it was just like, congratulations, you just lost your job. You just lost your property, you lost your business, you're now separated from your family. Because of this, people started trying to break into West Berlin, or they were breaking out into East Berlin to get people and bring them back into West Berlin. At first it was easy because it was just a fence and you could cut your way through it or you could scale it, but that fence rapidly turned into a 12 foot high concrete wall. And then when people started bringing ladders to scale over the top of it, they added a gigantic round metal top to it so there was nothing to grip and pull yourself over. And and then they added barbed wire and guard towers and guards that were allowed to shoot you on sight and turned it into a full-on demarcation line around West Berlin. Yeah. And that is when the escape attempts got incredibly It was also creative. like a gap, right? One of the right? more popular ones at the very beginning was that somebody from West Berlin would remove the gas tank from their car and they would just have a little one gallon jug for gas, just enough gas to drive into East Berlin, pick somebody up and drive back to the West. And the person would be strapped up underneath the car where the gas tank was supposed to be. But then the communists figured that out and then they had the guards at every checkpoint before a car could go into West Berlin. They would take a flexible metal wire and shove it down into where the gas tank should be to make sure it was in fact a gas tank. So then that plan was out. So one guy decided he was going to take his BMW Izetta. Did they just stab people? Oh, so literal people got stabbed there. Oh my God. Oh, this is so intense. I don't know which movie I remember. What, what, what was a spy movie? That is one, right? Uh, Henry Cavill, I think, was in that one, right? Uh, who, yeah, the, one of the recent ones. I forgot the name of it. There are like two actors. One is Henry Cavill, right? It was some kind of a spy type movie. 
Well, they showed basically this like Berlin Wall things, and I remember seeing like, uh, you know, there's like a basically no man's land type of place, and there are two walls. It was I think it wasn't just one wall, right? And he just took you know I don't know took some kind of like a zip line or something that I don't know. But yeah, every time I see this like insane. Cut the roof off, and then he was just gonna drive right underneath the checkpoint, going full speed, and he was gonna duck, and that's how he was gonna break into West Berlin, and that's exactly what he did. And because of this, the East Germans added spike strips and barricades to every checkpoint. Every time somebody escaped into West Berlin, the communists fixed how. Imagine how much you hate East Germany that you're gonna do all this shit, knowing that they have like probably like AK-47s or some shit. I don't know which guns they had, whatever. Like, oh, basically, they have a gun that can shoot at you, and you're just gonna yeah it was possible they made it more and more difficult and the escape attempts got more and more creative some of my personal favorites include shooting a steel <laughs> tunnel, over not? the wall from a high building and then zip lining to the other side having somebody from west berlin get a cow that's the movie thing so i guess they took real thing that happened and you know put it into the movie costume and tow a cattle trailer into East Berlin and then have two of his friends dress up in the cow costume and stand in the cattle trailer as they made it through the checkpoint. Stealing a tank and trying to drive uh, it through uh, the nope. wall. And when you... Mm -mm, nope, no, nope, hell no. There's a... <laughs> Uh, uh, <clears throat> moo. What did you say? I meant moo. Oh, all right. You're a cow. You can go. <laughs> got away from the Berlin Wall itself and you actually went to the East and West German border, the escape attempts got even crazier. One group of brothers took a farmer's crop duster, painted it like a Soviet MiG plane, flew it from West Germany into East Germany, picked up their other brother and <laughs> flew him back. And my absolute- What is that? Oh, it's our, one of our planes. Should we ask the command there should be a plane there? That's probably our plane. There you go personal favorite escape from communism was when two fathers got together and for a year and a half gathered fabric and propane and supplies so that they could build a fucking hot air balloon to escape to West Germany. Okay, I'm going to say that again, but a little bit slower. Eight people, two families, two fathers, two mothers, and four children escaped communism using a hot air balloon. Do you understand the gravity of what I've just told you? Because as a husband and a dad, I mean, they couldn't shoot a balloon. Like, you see balloon flying there. Like, this is like post-World War II. They're already like anti-air weapons and shit by that point, right? Because they just went through all this crap. So they probably have it. Just lying there, catching rust or something by that point. So they can't just grab and try to, you know, like shoot down a, even a higher balloon. I don't know. How high they went with that balloon, that's the question. Dad, it speaks volumes to me that two men in my situation got together, looked around and said, these living conditions are so horrific that the best bet for me and you and our wives and our kids is to secretly gather up a bunch of cotton fabric, AKA flammable shit, sew it into a balloon, attach it to a wicker basket, more flammable shit, and then propel it with a fucking flamethrower as we try to get away as fast as the wind will take us they while couldn't the afford a are braid. shooting at us. Okay, look, all I'm saying is I've never seen anybody that determined to escape yeah. capitalism. That's all I'm saying. Buh! But that's not real communism. Buh! Of course it's not, because it's never real communism whenever exactly. something goes bad. But whenever something goes bad under capitalism, it's 100% capitalism's fault, and we should get rid of it and do communism instead. Granted, communism every other time we've tried, it's ended in genocide and murder and human rights violations. But hey, I'm feeling it this time, guys. We're just like... We're this close to just one, maybe two more genocides and we're gonna have that communist utopia. We should keep trying. I can't, I need a beer, Jesus. Are there people who like claim that today? I, I know there are like some people who claim socialism, like socialism light, like how this like in Scandinavia, like that kind of makes sense. But are those people who like claim, like there has never been a time where communism worked even a bit. Like in theory, communism works, but every time they think about communism, they they leave out one critical error, which is human human error. Hum, humans will never work with communism. It's by now, it's like enough evidence of that. Just fucking move on, right? And that's not true communism. That will never be true communism because humans will always get in the way. That will never happen.
Sorry, I got carried away. I apologize. Anyways, the wall around Berlin gets more and more impenetrable, and eventually the only way to actually escape into West Berlin is to dig a tunnel and crawl your way hey, out. There you go. I just said it. Did. Now, obviously, this is a PR tunnel. nightmare. The communists have to explain to everybody why on earth they blocked off West Berlin and they're not letting anybody through. And because of that, they decide to give the Berlin Wall their name, the Anti-Fascist Rampart. Fascism obviously referring to Nazis, which makes this, I believe, one of the first historical appearances of the unfortunately still prevalent line of thinking that anybody that disagrees with me or how I live my life or my politics must be a Nazi. Yeah, that was the official stance of the Soviet Union. Sounds similar, hmm? Uh, there is no recent conflict going on where somebody claim other side to be a Nazi or whatever, right? Right? Union, basically accusing every Western power of being a fascist regime and saying they built the wall to, quote, protect against fascist elements conspiring to prevent the will of the people, despite the fact that the apparent will of the people was to leave their communist regime, but whatever. Just excuse me one more time. I'm so sorry. I just have to Google something real quick. Um, how to recognize a cult. Absolute authoritarianism without accountability. Check. Uh, zero tolerance for criticism or questions like getting arrested for political jokes. So I'm going to go with check. Uh, lack of meaningful financial disclosure regarding the budget. Check. Unreasonable fears about the outside world that often involve evil conspiracies and persecutions. Check. Okay, uh, sorry. Anyways, back to the video. Despite all the propaganda saying the Western world was literally just it's a, a bunch cult. of Nazis, yes, most a people in East Germany didn't buy it, and a ton of them still tried to escape to the West. Over the duration of the Berlin Wall, over 100,000 people would be captured and imprisoned for either telling political jokes, criticizing the government, or attempting to escape. In just a couple years, by 1964, these political prisoners were starting to stack up really really quickly and the USSR had to do something about it because it was costing them money and the Serbia. prisons were full and they had to get rid of all these people. So I mean, what's a communist regime to do? Well, that's easy. We've got all these prisoners that we don't want. They don't want to be here. Let's ransom them over to the West. And that's exactly what they do. They ransomed 33,000 political prisoners to the West and the- I'm surprised they didn't throw off to like Gulag or something, Serbia, whatever that is, right? This is one thing that is frightening, right? Every time you think of authoritarian regime, you're like, okay, People are going to rank up really fast. Like how many people you can put in prison? Like 10%, 20% going to put your 20% people in prison. How's that going to work? The most frightening thing is that, you know what? Yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to be a weight on my economy because these people will work more than the average person. We're just going to throw them into the gulag or whatever, right? In Serbia, they'll just mine and do shit, right? Free labor. That was so fucked up. It's like at this point, like getting more prison is better. That, that was the element there. The West paid on average 4,000 Deutschmarks per person. I say on average because it wasn't a static price. The USSR put different values on different people based on their skills and job set. For example, a That's general laborer up. might only bring 1,800 Deutschmarks, whereas a doctor could bring 15,000. Now, granted, I'm probably reading way too far into this, but I do find it a tiny bit hypocritical that the communist government, the same government that supposedly is striving to create a moneyless, classless society where everybody is equal, is also taking political prisoners, assigning different values on their life based on their ability to produce an economic output, almost like they're putting them into separate classes, implying that some people are worth more than others. And then they're turning around and trying to sell them to another government for money, which is allegedly something else they don't want, which is, you know, weird. It's almost like it's all a bunch of talking points and bullshit so they can have a bunch of control. I can do this all day. How, how long? How, what is it going to take to convince you that communism is bullshit? Tell me. I'll do it. Your Honor, I object. And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case. Overruled. Good call. In addition to the 33,000 political prisoners that the USSR essentially auctioned off for money, they also agreed to release 215,000 East German citizens. I'm not going to I didn't know about the prisoner thing. That is like... I don't know why it's surprising to why why anything's surprising at this point, but seriously, like that's the most fucked up thing you can do as a communism. Like, what is wrong with you, right? You, okay, everything's going to shit. You're gonna keep doing that, right? You're gonna make sort of everybody stalls. Fuck it, everything goes to shit. Fuck it, but at least you're gonna keep to your guns, right? If you wanna claim communism, but at the time you like wanna sell off the prisoners, different value. Oh, he's a scientist. He's, he's worth more. That goes everything against what you stand for. You like every people are equal, right? Communist utopia. Even in communism, they killed off a lot of smart thinking people just because they were like not equal to the people. 
somebody says something and claim to have something better like some scientists come up with some great theory and something like give me more resources i want to do this is short how dare you say you are like more to contribute than these other people way too many people were short you know like this like a lot of great thinkers and things like that and now you're gonna oh this scientist is worth more this doctor is worth more how does that work by this point like you just you just you know like accept a defeat at this point right for the low, low price of 2.3 billion Deutschmarks. Between 1945 and 1989, over 600 Germans were killed either trying to cross the border from east to west Germany or from east to west Berlin. And that is considered to be a very low, very conservative number because the USSR didn't want to release the actual numbers or admit that they'd killed anyone because every single person they killed trying to escape communism was a huge political hit to them. And imagine like the, their police or whatever that is, right, going door to door and whatever. Somebody just falsely claiming history is planning to run. And how many people like that were screwed? I can't even imagine the number there, right? Because whenever something like this arises, like way too many fear around, right? Imagine how many people were shot, just like, oh, we suspect you're trying to cross the border or whatever. Which raises the question, what happened in 1989? Well... That's the best part of the whole story. By 1989, the Soviet Union was going bankrupt. They were beginning to crumble. Pepsi? They were losing their sphere of influence and more and more civil unrest started to occur. And by November of 1989 in East Germany, there were protests, people demanding that they had the freedom of speech, the freedom of expression, the ability to critique their government without getting arrested. And most importantly, the freedom of travel. The communist government knew that they had to give the people an inch before the people turned around and took a mile. And the one inch they were willing to give them was they were gonna get rid of the travel ban and finally start granting people visas. They weren't gonna charge them money. They weren't gonna have to have some special circumstance to do it. And most importantly, they were actually gonna approve people and they were gonna do it quickly. These new travel regulations were drafted on November 8th. They were gonna be announced to the public on November 9th on live TV. And on November 10th, they would go into effect and people could show up to the passport office Office, apply and ideally get accepted and have the freedom to travel west and that's kind of what happened november 8th the new regulations get drafted that's fine november 9th they hand the new regulations to a government spokesperson by the name of gunter shabowski and he's going to read them on a government press conference on live tv he didn't have time to read through all the papers nobody took the time to explain it to him so on live tv he just kind of wings it we'll do it live he reads off what he thinks is important which is just here's the new rules that we're living by and everybody's like pretty happy about it and one journalist asks when does this go into effect and gunter not having time to have read through all the papers kind of shuffles through them real quick looking for an effective date and which he doesn't see one it's there he just doesn't see it so he just kind of shrugs and he's like as far as i know quote immediately without delay that's <laughs> true not mine and with that going out on live tv east germans got up and started going to the wall now this announcement imagine houses where streets are empty just a few cars are going by doors are closed as soon as they immediately and the whole door flew off and everybody in horde just come out run <laughs> was at the ass end of a boring government press conference so not a lot of people saw it but then the news outlets started picking it up and they started airing it both in east and west germany and then even more people started showing up on both sides of the wall and within just a few hours tens of thousands of people had shown up to checkpoint charlie one of the main checkpoints for the berlin wall to go from east to West and they demanded to be let go because they had just been told by their government on live TV that they had the freedom of travel and the guards had no idea what was going on and they were outnumbered tens of thousands to one. And eventually the guards were forced to simply let- That is the thing, right? I, I know it's like very hard to do. All of this could have prevented every single fucking body just like showed up to the border like fuck this, we don't like this. Like how many people they would have shot, right? I, every time I hear about this like, uh, you know, dictatorial uh, government come out, which like people outnumber them by, by what, like tens of hundreds of number. I don't know, right? It's like uh, all the people that are like 2% of the population, 3% of the population are in the government. Right? How many people they have compared to how many people live there? So, you know, power of people always like, if, if you want by overwhelming number, you can just, how many people are you going to shoot? Are you going to shoot everybody? Right, so that is the problem, right? Every time, like, it's easier to say to like, who's gonna be first? Okay, you're first, but how many people are gonna follow you? You, you don't, have, you're not a hive mind. You don't know what people are gonna think. So this is always hard. But imagine if that had happened, this Berlin Wall would have like fell much earlier. 
people through. And then word spread that they actually let them through. And all of Berlin, both east and west, came out and had basically the biggest block party the world has ever seen as a city that had been divided in half for 28 years was finally reunited. And then they celebrated this reunification by tearing down the wall that had separated them for so long. In conclusion, Germany after World War II is the closest thing to a controlled experiment that you can have pitting capitalism against communism to mm. see which one would triumph in real life. They took one country with one people, divided it down the middle, and gave each a set of rules to live by. And while capitalism is far from perfect and it has a ton of things that we can improve upon, I think the results of this experiment speak for themselves. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. Anything more? Not this time. Okay. Yeah, this was the... Look, man, communism versus capitalism, right? Communism is about utopia of the people. Implying the people are the same, which they are not. Implying people, all people think the same, they don't. We are not hive mind. We are not something that just like want same thing, are same, happy with the same thing. Everybody's way too different, way too different, insanely different, right? You can have variety of people, like some people who like achieve everything will never be happy and will achieve even more. Some people have like a little bit and they're like happy enough. Way too many different people. They have way too many different goals. Communism implies that everybody's same, everybody wants the same thing. It's just like we're going to cre create a utopia and it's like honor-based system. Like everybody's going to be like honor. No, that's not going to work. There's no honor-based system, right? Governments will abuse of the power, which they every single time do. Capitalism focus on individu individuality. <clears throat> Why do I have a hard time saying that? Right? Every individual, uh, you know, basically has like ability to get bigger, right? Free market. If you want to get big, all you have to do is like put effort and do your thing, right? Everybody's free, right? Democracy, everybody has their own, every individual has their own right. And the people make up the country, individuals make up the country. Country doesn't come first. Nation doesn't come first. People come first, right? So free market and all of this, of course, there's going to be better every single time. Why wouldn't that be, right? Better people, you know, people who want to rise up, they will rise up, right? Everybody collectively will benefit from this because it's a country is one entity. Taxes and things, everybody will rise up, right? Uh, even the uh, people who do basic job will have better life because there are people who like did better things and they are benefiting from that. That is what happened in capitalism, right? In this, like, nobody can go bigger than, you know, like, general people. No, just, like, few people can rise everybody with them, right? Few people can rise the tide where everybody will be lifted. That the Communism doesn't understand that. All right, well, that was the Berlin Wall, how communism turned East Germany into a prison state. Bachelor of Fire Attrition. If you like my next video, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.